Hello, my name is Jonas Ronegard. I used to work as an environment artist in the games industry here in Japan as well as abroad. Currently, I dedicate my time to create and sell tools and tutorials for other artists through my various shops and partners. In this tutorial, I will sculpt a rock formation in ZBrush from start to finish and show you some of my workflow and sculpting techniques. After finish sculpting, I will take the sculpt into Maya for render passes in Arnold. And after that, I will show you my post editing presentation workflow in Photoshop. I will mix between real time and speed it up video since sculpting rocks tends to become very repetitive. We'll also be able to download the finished sculpt as well as some of the brushes that I use for this project for free. You can find the download link in the video description. As you can see, I'm currently working on some sketches, mostly just to brainstorm and get ideas for the final design. Even if your final design ends up looking nothing like the sketches, it still helps you find ideas that might not come out in visual form. And as you can see, I'm in no way a concept artist, so excuse the quality. It might seem a bit overkill to make sketches for a rock, but from experience, it's very easy to get lost in time when you're sculpting rocks without any direction. With rocks, you can kind of get away with a lot of crazy designs, as you're not locked behind a lot of design rules. So it's very easy to just keep adding and changing stuff and end up sculpting in circles. Honestly, I usually don't sketch much for my own work, but since this is for a tutorial, I'm trying to do it correctly. For a tutorial, it's better to have some sort of set direction so it doesn't become too dragged out and uninteresting. In this first part, I'll finish the sketches and create a base mesh in Maya that I will use as a size reference in ZBrush. I won't go into too much detail about techniques and tools in part one and focus more on my idea process in general. So if you want to go directly to the sculpting, please start watching from part 2. I don't have the qualifications to give advice on sketching or painting in general, but if there are other beginners like me watching, for rocks, I find it very useful to use a square brush for the initial block out sketch. It really makes it a lot easier. You can make one yourself, but I also try to add the brush or a link to where you can find it together with other files linked in the video description. The reason why I work with very contrasty levels of grey in the sketch is because I want to be able to color pick and adjust the colors later on. So it gets a lot easier to mask out than it would if I for example use a soft brush with a closer level of grey. I'm trying to make sketches with very clear design differences. Even if I might already have an idea of what I want to do, making something completely different and not locking yourself into a design pattern usually helps in finding more and better ideas. But it's very easy to get locked in and for me as well, some of the sketches turn out to look quite similar. So as I finish the sketches, I usually put them all together to more easily compare them against each other. I won't necessarily pick one sketch and go with that, but rather we'll look for parts and details that I like and try to combine them into one final design. As you can see, I'm currently changing some colors and levels, not only to make it look better, but also to get a better idea of what kind of style and theme I want to go for. At the moment, I'm looking towards a red desert kind of look. Now that I'm done with the sketching phase, I'll try to find the parts and details that I like. One detail that really stuck with me while I was sketching and that I added to multiple sketches was this arc type of design. I think it adds a lot of interest and story to the piece. Instead of 
this just being another rock. It adds the possibility of being something man-made. Like parts of a big gate in the middle of the desert. I'm also liking these thinner spaces as a way to pass through. And it would also work great as a way to add interesting lighting. Last thing I want to add are these pillar-like areas with smaller rocks holding up the bigger ones. So I have decided to go with the top left sketch as my main design, but I will add some of the elements I just talked about. For example, I want to try and raise up the main rock, then carve out the bigger opening at, at the bottom, giving me that thinner entrance. I will also try to add that pillar design somewhere. So for this final design, I will try to take it a bit further than the original sketches. Maybe add some lighting to get a better idea of how it might look. As you can see, directly as I start the final sketch, I try to add both the thinner entrance at the bottom, as well as the pillar design on the right. It's good to get those points of interest in from the beginning, so you can work around them. Other than that, I'm just sketching as I did for my previous sketches, just adding details as I go. And that's about it until we get to the next phase. Adding colors and making it pop a bit more, like I did with the original sketches. I also try to add some lighting to get a better idea of how I want the final design to look. I now have a pretty good idea of what I want to do, and anything I do beyond this is more about making the final concept more presentable. But even when playing around, there is always a chance you come up with a new and better idea. I still haven't locked down the scale of this scene yet, but I would love to go big. I also think it would work well at a smaller scale. So what it comes down to is if I have the time or not. I will decide on that later during the sculpting process. Not sure if I'll keep these sand dunes for the final sculpt, but it could be a nice touch. For now I'll paint in some characters and birds to show the scale I would want it to be, but as I said before it might change. I will call this done for now and head over to Maya to create a simple base mesh. I'll start by adding the concept image to a plane, so I can use it as a guide and to model on top of it. Maya is in no way needed for this tutorial, and I won't go into details and techniques. And anything I do here you can do in any other traditional modeling software such as Blender or 3D Studio Max. I could also do this directly in ZBrush, but I prefer the viewport control I have in Maya for tasks like this. As you can see, I'm using boxes to model out the shapes. There are other and better techniques for this kind of work, and normally I would probably use Quadra with the Live tool, but since I will only use this mesh as a size reference, I want to keep this process simple and quick. 
I will repeat the same process for the rest of the rocks and since I don't think anyone will find that interesting or helpful, I will skip ahead. I have now finished modeling out most of the main rocks. I've tried to add some thickness to the rocks, but I suspect a lot of this will change once I start sculpting. I'm now starting to model out the ground using quad draw. I'm trying to be a bit more precise with the ground, since I will probably use it as a base for the actual ground sculpt. The reason I won't be using the rock base for my sculpt is because I will be sculpting a simple modular rock instead of ZBrush that has some large middle sized details. I'll use that one rock to fill the whole scene by stretching and scaling it to fit the current base mesh. The reason I do this is because it's a lot easier to start sculpting on an uneven surface. Also, if you do miss spots for the final sculpt, there will still be some detail there for 100% of the scene. I will talk more about this once we start sculpting. I think the ground is starting to take shape now, and since I will mostly do minor adjustments and tweaks, I'm going to skip ahead. I'm now close to calling this done. I have put out some more rocks and I have mirrored the ground to the back. I won't bother too much about it at the moment since the ground is easier to adjust inside of ZBrush. In the next part I will start sculpting the modular rock as well as show you the brushes I have created for this tutorial and how you can use them in your own work. I hope you found this first part interesting enough to stay with me for the next part. Thank you for watching.